For years, Lexus has been successful selling the RX crossover, so it was only a matter of time before the company branched out with something a little smaller and sportier, and that is what we have here today, the Lexus NX 300 F Sport. I'm Jared from CarBuzz, and today I'm gonna to be reviewing the NX 300 F Sport and taking you for a walk around and drive of this very impressive luxury compact SUV from Lexus. Now, I'm gonna walk around this car. When it was first introduced, it was the NX 200T, although Lexus has dropped the 200T from both this and the IS in favor of the 300 badge, although that really hasn't done anything to change what powers this car. It's still a two liter turbocharged four cylinder producing 200 and 35 horsepower and 256 foot-pounds of torque and the F Sport doesn't really do anything to change the output It's more of an appearance and suspension package and I think it looks extremely good I think it looks a lot better than the base NX. This is a very uh, Tall and not so wide vehicle, but I think the F Sport makes it look a little bit wider with these gray accents You have sort of this lower bigger spindle grille, which I think looks better than the stock grille. Some people hate it, but I actually really like the Lexus spindle grille because it helps to set this apart from all of the other crossovers that are coming out. And you do get these larger 18 inch gray wheels. I think those look really good as well. And we do have these F Sport badges throughout the exterior. Some of the big changes also take place on the inside where to go along with this white exterior, we have this awesome red leather interior. I think it looks absolutely awesome. These seats are more bolstered than what you'd get on the base NX. These are some of my favorite seats in any luxury car that I've been in. You do have these black accents on the side and they're heated and ventilated on this F Sport model. And I would just love to spend hours in these seats. They're very, very supportive and they do hold you in, although they are not uncomfortable. Throughout the interior, we're gonna have this nice sort of aluminum looking trim. It is, you know, a bit plasticky if you wanna go ahead and touch it, but it just looks nice to the finish. One weird quirk is that this red stitching that goes along here, it's all throughout the cabin and it looks pink. I don't know why, it, it just looks pink to my eye and no matter where it is, it just has like a pink hue to it. Whereas the seats are sort of this deeper red. That's very un-Lexus. Usually Lexus is very, very careful about the little details. So pink stitching is just something that is a little bit off to me. I'm surprised that that made it out of the factory like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut it and we're gonna show you the interior of this car. Up here we have the Lexus N-Form infotainment system, which looks a lot better for 2018. The resolution is great, but as I'm going to tell you, I do not love the way it functions. It's actually an extremely annoying system. Down here we have all of our climate controls, dual zone automatic climate control, and we have our heated and ventilated seats. All these buttons are really tiny. I have really big fingers, so these uh, controls, they're very nice quality, but they just seem really, really small to my big fat fingers so if you have tiny fingers you may feel a little bit more normal down here we have a little bit of storage space not all that much a cd player which is a bit odd those are seemingly disappearing and we have our radio controls down here this is to control the drive modes we have eco to the left push for normal go to the right for sport i'll tell you about those while we drive the car we have an auto hold function that holds you when you come to a stop so you don't have to hold the brake and the shifter is just a normal prnd with a manual mode up here is the starter button i'm going to go ahead and push that so we get some airflow in here steering wheel comes closer to me um, it has sort of the comfort access where it'll bring the steering wheel close move the close and it'll put the steering wheel back up and move the seat back when you're done to help you get out a little easier if you've been in a gsf or rcf recently this steering wheel is going to look very familiar to you it's pretty much identical to what you would get in one of those which is kind of cool i really like that actually this nice perforated leather on the sides here are all your radio controls here and over here you have this little 
D-pad that helps you control all of the functions in this little center screen. I've been averaging a little over 24 MPG in this car. We have our range eco indicator. We have a boost gauge, which is pretty fun. You also have a G meter. I don't know how many NX drivers are actually gonna use that. Tire pressure and some other features here. We have our navigation, our uh, audio with whatever audio is on, on playing. We have our automatic cruise control and lane departure warning controls, which can be also be controlled here. We have some additional safety features down here. We have our blind spot monitor. We have our automatic high beams. This is for our tailgate. We also have a nice heated steering wheel on here. We have our view button, which will engage the 360 degree camera, which is part of a package on this car. It's only about $800. So it looks really, really clear. It has good trajectory lines. The 360 degree bird's eye is great for parking. So if I go ahead and turn this wheel, you see the yellow lines move and that kind of points you where you're gonna be going. You also have your paddle shifters on the wheel here to control the six-speed automatic. Now, the thing that I don't love here is the way that you control this stereo. It's sort of like a mouse pad. So as you can hear, we see here, we have all of our media sources. So you kind of just have to like scroll around on it like you would on a computer, but you tend to miss stuff. It's, it, it's not great. I really wish there was just something more basic like a touch screen here. And I wish there was Apple uh, CarPlay and Android Auto to get some good voice command in there. Although Lexus's voice command system is not bad as it sits. One of the interesting features on this F-Sport model is this little dial here labeled ASC. It's just an infinitely adjustable dial. So you can see I can kind of put it in the middle. I can put it at the bottom. I can put it all the way up. That stands for active sound control. And I'm gonna show you what that does when we get this on the road a little later on. You may also notice that the uh, dashboard here is shaped sort of like the spindle grill, which is kind of interesting. I really like how the that is sort of synergistic with the front end of the car. The materials on this aren't great. They're kind of plasticky, but everything else is great. The leather, the stitching feel, the steering wheel, all of that feels extremely premium. This does not feel like a base market car. This does feel like a true Lexus. Now we have a couple quirky things here. We've got uh, these little dome lights where you just touch them to turn them on. You can swipe across too we'll sort of turn them off I find that interesting and there is this weird storage area all the way down here it's this it just kind of comes up and you have some storage down there and there's a mirror on the back of that I don't know why but you know it was just nice for Lexus to throw that in and before we go and check out the back seat and the trunk I'm gonna just guide you through what you get on this F Sport using the window sticker we see that $39,000 price it's just under 40 grand back Backup cameras extra. The big package here is going to be that F Sport package for $28.65, although it gives you a whole lot of stuff heated and ventilated front seats, a moonroof, power Telton telescoping steering column, memory, mirror, driver seat with lumbar support, blind spot monitor, rear cross traffic alert. That's a huge amount of stuff for just $2,800. And the total cost of this car is still sub $50,000, which I think is a great value compared to the German and Europe. European cars, although there are some Japanese competitors like from Infinity and Acura that do uh, compete similarly in price. So now I'm going to show you the back seat, which is pretty nice. The back seats are actually black, so the front seats are red, but these are actually black with uh, red on the side. I think that's kind of interesting that the back seats are a different color than the front seats. Just a little odd quirk there. We've got a little cup holder here. And the leg room is pretty darn good. I accidentally pushed the seat way far back and I'm still able to fit with plenty of room. This seat is usually a lot more forward. This is sort of in its comfort uh, access mode where it's gonna come up a lot to get to my driving position. So I have plenty of room back here. Headroom is quite good as well, even for taller occupants. Although this sort of is not great for visibility, although they did put this little glass piece here so you won't feel claustrophobic sitting back here. All in all, very nicely designed rear seat. The trunk is also nicely sized. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. Power operated lift gate. Operates decently quickly. You do have some storage space here below that is 
pretty decently usable. You have a little area there, and then you have this little foam area here. Area is pretty darn good, except it is cut off a little bit because Lexus wanted this to be a very sporty design. Uh, so it does sort of taper here. And if you want to load it up sort of as tall as you can get it, you may run into some problems just stacking up boxes too high. Although you'd have to take off this uh, cargo cover anyway if you wanted to do that. Now I'm going to go ahead and push the button to go ahead and shut this. And I'm going to go ahead and take out the car for a drive to really compare it against some of the other rivals in its class. All right, so now I'm underway in the 2018 Lexus NX 300 F Sport. And now I'm going to talk about how this car drives, which is one of the better attributes of the NX. I really enjoy the way this car drives. It's actually a very, very fun vehicle to drive, even though it is sort of a family-oriented crossover. Now, even in the F Sport, power's not going to increase. It's a 2-liter turbo, as I mentioned earlier, that's going to get you 235 horsepower, 256 foot-pounds of torque. Those numbers are pretty good for this segment. They're nowhere near class-leading. There are more powerful cars out there. You can get a 300-plus version, horsepower-plus version of cars like the BMW X3, the Volvo XC60. Lexus, I guess, just doesn't see the need to sell a performance engine of this particular car. The F Sport models in the Lexus lineup don't always add power. In fact, I don't think any of the F Sport models actually receive a power boost. What you're going to get is mostly a visual upgrade as well as some suspension upgrades in there. And I've had sort of the opinion that F Sport kind of ruins certain models. Like, I would never do the F Sport package on an LS because that's a very smooth luxury car, and I don't think it really makes that much sense to get an F Sport model. The NX, I actually really like the F Sport package for a number of reasons. It only costs a little over two grand to get it, and I think visually it completely changes the way the NX looks. I think the NX is a sort of docile looking little crossover. You either love the styling or you don't. I know a lot of people are not big fans of Lexus's giant spindle grill up front. I happen to like the NX because we're living in a world where all of these crossovers are starting to blend together. So when one tries to branch out and look a little different, I don't necessarily mind that. I think it looks pretty good. But I definitely think that this F Sport one looks a lot better than the base car. The base car just looks a little bit, you know, I, I want to say low rent, that's a little bit mean to it, but the grill just works a lot better on this F Sport model. Um, I like the, the bigger black wheels. I love everything that it comes with, especially on the interior. This interior looks great. These seats, I showed you those in the walk around, are great. They hug you without being uncomfortable. I could sit in these for hours. They're heated and ventilated, which I think comes in a, in a, a package. So some of this stuff is optional, but this interior is absolutely great. This steering wheel pretty much is identical to what you would find in an RCF, which is a high dollar sports car. One of my friends actually has an RCF and I, I sat in it recently when I was testing this car and all of the buttons, the paddle shifters, the way the steering wheel is perforated is pretty much identical to what you would get on a fully fledged F model. So that's pretty cool if you're into that sort of thing. If you think it's a little pretentious of Lexus to maybe undercut its sports car by giving you know their cro small crossover the same steering wheel, you know maybe you're not as big of a fan. But the steering wheel controls some pretty darn good steering for this class. This is not a class of drivers cars here. These, you know, compact SUVs. I drove the Volvo XC60 pretty recently. Loved it, but the steering was completely disconnected. I drove the BMW X2, which is actually in a class right below the NX and the X3 and similar competitors. And although BMW is usually known for its steering, that car just had really dead steering as well, and I didn't like that. The Lexus may be one of the best ones that I've tested in this segment. The steering is a little bit dead, which you can't really fault it because this is a class of car that really just isn't meant to be full of driver's cars. But the steering rack is really, really tight. 
I think it gives you some good feedback. It's a little vague on center, but once you load it up, there's actually some really good feedback there. Now, the sport mode, uh, it has a nor an eco, normal, and sport mode. You just push for normal, turn to the left for eco, and turn to the right for sport. It doesn't do too much in the way of steering. I don't think I feel any noticeable difference in the steering inputs. But what that is going to do is it, it's going to turn on that active sound control, which is part of the uh, F-Sport. And I'm going to show you that now. I'm going to do a little bit of accelerating here. And you're going to hear when I get on it. You hear that? That's a lot louder than it was before. That's fake engine noise being pumped in through the active sound control. There's a little speaker supposedly behind the dash that's delivering that. So I'm going to go ahead and lay on it again. I think it's pretty interesting. It sounds okay. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off and do the same thing. So that was it without the active sound control. It's a noticeable difference. I hope it's coming through on camera, but it is noticeable when you have that active sound control on. When you're in eco and I think normal, the active sound control shuts off. So it's really only for sport mode, but it is kind of interesting. You put it in sport mode and it really does give you the sensation that you're going fast, even if you really aren't going that much faster than you normally would, which is kind of cool. Acceleration is, I would call it brisk go ahead and do some now. Zero to 60, 7.2 seconds. Again, you know, that's not going to wow anybody, but merging onto the highway and everything like that is very, very smooth. No matter if you get the F-Sport or not, the only transmission option here is a six-speed automatic. Now, six-speed automatic is a little bit outdated when you compare that to other competitors. Most of the other cars in this segment are already using eight speeds. And that sounds like a big issue, although Lexus really nailed this six-speed automatic. It's one of the really, really good ones. It doesn't feel outdated at all, like it needs two more gears, you know. The point of having gears is to sort of smooth it out, but this Lexus gearbox is just so buttery smooth. I'm going to go ahead and tap it into manual mode, put it in sport. It shifts relatively quickly, too. I just got three downshifts in a row. There's my upshift. Now I want to go back down to third. The downshifts are a little bit slow. The upshifts are pretty darn quick, actually. If you're doing some real sporty driving, it's pretty darn good. It's a real manual mode, which I know Lexus doesn't do on some of their cars. Interestingly, there's an absence of a Sport Plus mode. I thought that the whole point of having F Sport models is that they would get an additional Sport Plus mode. Not that it's really necessary in this car. I find the Sport mode to be plenty fun to drive, but it's just interesting that Sport Plus mode isn't there because I drove the LX570 and that had one for some strange reason. So yeah, it was just a really odd omission in my opinion to not have one on this car. Eco mode is actually the mode that I found myself using the most. You'd think I would use normal mode because usually eco mode just makes cars feel really sluggish. Like they don't want to move anywhere. They really retard the throttle response. But I actually love the way that this eco mode is, is programmed. In fact, I would almost go so far as to rename it comfort mode. It doesn't act like eco mode does in most cars that I drive. Most of the cars, they just, you know, it really doesn't want to get going. This one, it just sort of makes the transmission shift a little sooner. It makes the engine just a little quieter because it's shifting. You're not really hearing the engine as much. So it's, it's keeping those RPMs low and it just gives you this really nice, comfortable, smooth acceleration experience that I've actually used a lot in this week of reviewing. And that's rare that I ever use in eco mode. So that's pretty high praise for this Lexus. And the other problem that I sometimes have with F-Sport models is that they tend to make the ride a little too busy. I know if you look at the IS, whether you get the IS 300 or the 350, the F-Sport package on that car makes the ride a little bit too stiff. That is a smaller car than this. They don't share a platform, by the way. So this is front-wheel drive base. The one I'm driving happens to have all-wheel drive. 
but the ride here is actually fantastic. It's a little bit sporty, but not too much. So when you throw it into a corner, you're going to feel some body roll. They didn't make it as stiff as they could have, and I think that was the smart decision here. I think that some automakers with their sport packages are making the cars a little bit too stiff, especially on these SUVs where I don't think people really care all that much about how well they perform on a racetrack. So although this is definitely firmer than a base NX300, it's not unlivable whatsoever. If you go on some really, really rough segments of road or highway, uh, I drove on uh, Florida's I-4 recently, and when you are on the roughest parts, you do feel that it's a little bit sportier than a normal NX, but I would never call this suspension uncomfortable. It's very, very pleasant to drive. Even on the highway, the, the level of sound is great. This is still a Lexus through and through. Now, this is the smallest Lexus SUV you can buy at the moment. There is gonna be a smaller model called the UX that's coming out. We will be on the first drive of that. So check out carbuzz.com for when that review goes live. And that's gonna be based on the Toyota CHR platform. So I'm interested to see if that car can also maintain this whole Lexus mentality. And that's a problem when you're talking about an entry-level sedan or an entry-level crossover is can you maintain the the prestige of your brand and this definitely does this feels like a Lexus through and through these materials are all premium the ride is very premium it drives like a premium feeling car this does not drive like a Toyota RAV4 for people who are wondering it is loosely related to that architecture I believe but it feels nothing like driving a Toyota this does feel through and through like a Lexus there are some noticeable faults, as I said during the walk around. This nav system, oh my gosh, has to go. It's just gotten worse over the time that Lexus has introduced it. It used to have that little hockey puck. Now it has the this touchpad. I hate it. I find it so distracting while I'm trying to drive and use it. That, that definitely needs to go. The resolution increase has been great, but yeah, that's a pretty big fault. And as far as size, there are definitely bigger uh, crossovers in this segment that feel a little more roomy, both in the back seat and in the trunk. And even up here, it's not necessarily too tight, although this high center console does make it feel more like a car than an SUV. So you really have to make sure you like that. You have to like the feeling of being in a car think that the way this car drives is actually really really nice and I would definitely recommend it to a lot of people the nav system bothers me but I think you could get used to it if you live with this car all the time there's just a few things holding this car back from being a great buy in my mind so I'm gonna give it a recommendation of worth a look a very strong worth a look so I've driven a couple other cars where they're worth a look but I really wouldn't recommend them to too many people this is very very close if Lexus comes back and make some changes to this nav system, I think that this could definitely be in contention for a great buy. There is a 2019 model coming out, although the changes for that are very, very minimal, so don't expect too many differences with that. And with that said, I hope you've enjoyed this review, and if you'd like to see more, subscribe to the Car Buzz Unboxing YouTube channel, and be sure to download our app on iOS and Android, and follow us on all of the social media platforms. I hope you've enjoyed this video. See you next time.